seeing you here. Tonight I would like to regale you in a story of a young writer named Rich and a town called Rokenville. This story has a villain named Duff who had a fetish with feet and he beat people to death with boots. Our story begins in the backyard of an anonymous redhead who came across Duff urinating in his yard. This was not the first time and he confronted Duff telling him that there was a, po a possibility if he did not stop he would call the authorities. Let's see this. What you did, man? It's everywhere, man. Man, you gotta stop peeing in my yard. I'm serious. What are you gonna do about it? I might just call the authorities. Dog feces. Just hit me with a boot, man. I mean, like, a boot! Of all the things, a boot. What are you doing up there? Well, at this point in our tale, Rich is unable to come up with a story due to the dullness of Rokenville. A story is written, but not by Rich, by the strange fellow who dwells within his closet and tells him good night. Rich has the story in under his own name, and his beautifully handsome boss loves it. The boss is so excruciatingly beautiful that it's just hard to look at him because he looks that good. Let's take a look. What's the scoop, Rich? I got a doozy. Rich! Get in here! What do you got for me, Rich? Well, I got some doozy for you, boss. Give me this doozy! This is crap, Rich! I hope you die! Get on my side and don't come back till you got a real doozy! Go on, get him! myself a story. A story, man. I got all kinds of stories, man. Yeah? Oh, yeah, man. There's a good one right here. Bitty Bones. Bitty. I'll give you 20, man. 20, man? You got 22? 
I got 23 if you can make it good. Oh, it's good, man. It's a deal. Man, I can't do it. I still feel good about this. Too bad, man. Too bad. Next time. Oh, he'll get his story. That kinky little journalist. Oh, man. Alright, I guess it's time to write my story now. Boy, you pooped. Well, that's enough work for one day. Sleep tight, Ritz. Sleep tight, my little journalist. Here lies Rich, the journalist who could not write a story. His stories were subpar and not interesting. Weren't even good enough for the town paper. He should have looked and found a story, but he didn't. And he died alone because really, who wants to sleep with someone who can't write a good story? No one, not even the ugly one. Hope the boss likes my story. That got so doozy. Oh, he will. Mm. It's kind of peculiar. Uh, looks like I wrote a little bit more than I thought last night. Wow. Hey. I wrote a doozy. <laughs> Oh, it's a doozy, all right. Where should I go for my long weekend? Pakistan sounds nice. Hello, this is Trap Lake. Get me Pakistan. I want to go there for my long weekend. You think? Of course I'm sure I want to go to Pakistan. Get. Bye. Rich! Hey, bud. Get in there. You got a start for me, Rich. I got a doozy. Oh, that's good. That's a doozy. This is great A material, Rich. Nice it's going on the presses right away. Boss on your chin, Rich. Oh, thank you, sir. Right on to the presses. Wow. Oh, back again. By this time in the story, Duff is feeling threatened by the truth being told in Rich's news story and begins to stalk him to let him know that he is not messing around. Duff also becomes infatuated with Rich at one point, and you might say that his curiosity gets the better of him. Oh, I want to be at my house this early in the morning. God. Hey, boy. Whoa. How'd you know about the boot beating? Uh, how'd you get in my house, man? It's not important. What's important is, how'd you know about the boot beating? Well, I was just, you know, walking down the street one day. Uh, I seen a guy get booted to death, so I sat down and I watched, you know? This isn't over. I'll be back. I let myself out. Whoa, that was weird. 
Oh, good thing it's got nothing to do with what's going on in my life right now. Ah. Back again, are we? Well, at this point in our story, Richie is acknowledged for his uh, fine work in the journalistic field. Not really his fine work, but the freaky guy in the closet's fine work. And he's awarded a uh, crown and a key from the mayor of the town of Roganville, Tom Thompson. Let's watch. Nice. Let's watch! Oh, hell! Tom Thompson, Supreme Ruler of Rokenville! Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to present an award to... Lower. Okay? Okay. We're here to present an award to an amazing, amazing writer. Rich, get on up here. Rich, it was a good story. Thanks, man. Thanks. And for such a terrific story, I present you with this crown and this key. And the pillow. No, <laughs> no, just, just the key. Just, hey, don't hey, hey, that's my hey. pillow. Well, all right. All right. Now that key, that key doesn't mean too much. It's just, just a sign of my, my token of appreciation for such a terrific story. And you gotta make it out of string, man. That's all we had. That's all we had. Like, I'm sorry. This is Rokenville. Hey, Crosby. Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's been a while. Yeah. Hey, I got something to tell you, man. Yeah, you heard about my story, huh? Man, it's legendary. Yeah, man. Um, I made it up. No! Man, you gotta keep it a secret for me, alright? Okay, man. But it's gonna cost you your toe. Ah! Uh, see you later, cousin. When it comes to rich and dumb, I find them both to be guilty. I uh, also find them guilty, Your Honor. <laughs> what do you mean, not guilty? Wouldn't you like to see two grown men tear each other apart with nothing but boots? Hmm? I know that I would. <laughs> oh, yeah. The deliberators have deliberated. And Judge Francis has decided those two are guilty. Kill each other with boots! In order to determine which of the two convicted, Rich or Duff, will go to jail, they will have a fight to the death with boots. Boots! 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 Boots!
nice fight, I say. Aye. Quite the fight. Yes, it is. I say so myself, darling. And on this fight, who do you suppose will win? Mm -hmm. My bets are on the duff, man. You are betting on the duff? The duff. Then I will bet on the rich. Aye. A wager. How much? Ten thousand pounds. How about five? If you cannot do ten thousand pounds, I will take five. And if you are too poor to afford five pounds, I will take two. And if you cannot afford two, I will take one. That is my final offer. No less than one. You will be too poor. Yes, it is a wager. Let us shake on it. that this poor boy doesn't get in trouble with any bobbies because I've been drinking in his car all day and it's bound to smell like alcohol if he gets pulled over. And I say, Sonny, put the gas on. Put the gas on, let's get some... 